I'd like to now talk about what are called discrete and continuous space and time stochastic processes. So we have discrete or and continuous and space and time. And by space it really means state space. So we can have both of these, we can discrete state space, discrete time, continuous space, phase or continuous time. So we have uh, four choices of things that we could do from. So let's start with the state space. Uh, remember I talked about the, uh, the staircase and now we know that when I say staircase, what I really mean is a state space or the set of circles over here. And what we have in this case is that we have certain set of uh, a finite set of states and the stochastic process assumes these states uh, over, uh, over here and it goes from one state to another. Uh, imagine instead of a staircase we had a ramp and then the stochastic process could go at any point over here and of course we can't really draw that in terms of a state diagram but uh, this would be a discrete space uh, it's space stochastic process and this would be a continuous space stochastic process. And uh, to give a practical example of a continuous space stochastic process, imagine that we have a, a, a line uh, and there, there is somebody who is uh, taking a random number of steps uh, forward and backward along this line. So they're going back and forth in some, in the, in some zigzag random fashion, uh, what's otherwise called a random walk. And in a random walk, the position of the of the particle uh, or the stochastic process on the line maybe this is zero so we can view this as being a, 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 the the uh, uh, line with infinite extent then the uh, x position of the uh, of the person the particle uh, on the line uh, will correspond to the state of the stochastic process and as you can see over here the uh, states assumed are infinite uh, they are the they're actually all possible reals and so we have this to be a continuous space process whereas something that looks like a staircase or something that look looks like this is a discrete state process what about continuous time well similarly we can think of transitions between the states happening either on a clock tick or without any regard to clock. Uh, so if transitions can happen only on the tick of a clock, then there's discrete time. So discrete time, we have a clock and the clock governs the motion of the process from state to state. However, with continuous time, it's slightly more complicated. In continuous time, we can move at the, the, the stochastic process can transition from one state to another at any point in time. And so what we have over here is if you have time over here and we have the state and let's state for, let's keep the state space discrete for now. So these are let's say the possible states. Then the stochastic process goes from one state to another, but instead of evenly jumping, it could have a very jerky process like this where these time intervals over here are actually not uniform. And so you can think of T1 as being the time between the first two transitions, T2 the time between the second two transitions, etc. And these time intervals are drawn from uh, actually R plus, they're positive real numbers. And uh, these are the inter movement or interstate transition time intervals. And as you can see, uh, all such combinations, all four combinations are valid. We can have discrete space with discrete time, discrete space with continuous time, etc. Uh, and uh, it, it's probably worthwhile spending a few minutes thinking about examples of stochastic processes that fall into these, uh, each of these four categories.